So, Dr. Holzer, please. Thank you. Um, what I'm going to do is try and briefly sort of bring you up to speed on what liquefaction is, because it can be a major hazard in earthquake country. And I'm going to stand off to the side here so you can see the slides. And what I'm going to do is answer these five questions. Uh, what is it? Is it a concern in San Francisco? What actually happens? Are there engineering solutions? And what are the uh, regulatory or legal considerations? And in California, fortunately, we have some of those. The next slide, Anthony. So what is it? The first question. Next slide. Conceptually, it's actually pretty simple. And this is a picture in a farmer's field. And what you see here is sand that has been shaken by the earthquake. It's beneath the water table. And it turns out when loose sand is shaken, the soil grains sort of collapse. And it can actually find its way to the surface. And the sand, and even more important, when you have contaminants in the ground, the water comes out of the ground. So that is basically what liquefaction is. And I'll show you some of the other effects, because if you stop to think about it, once the ground has become liquid-like, it's free to move in ways that it normally wouldn't when it's, when it's a solid material. The next slide, Anthony, uh, sort of shows the uh, process in a little more detail. We're looking here at what could be a cross-section through the earth, and we have, say, some clay at the land surface, and then that is supported by these sand grains. And if you could hit the key again. Uh, if we take a little box of that soil, without any earthquake, the sand holds up the ground basically by the uh, forces or stresses going through the individual grains. But now if we have an earthquake, the grains move a little bit. They actually don't move this much. It's surprising how little they move. And as I've drawn it here, the grains are not touching each other. And so that load from all that stuff on top of that uh, little box is now being carried by the water. And so the water pressure goes up. And that's why you have water squirting out of the ground. And it can actually be a pretty dramatic phenomenon. I remember talking to a fireman at Treasure Island after Loma Prieta, and his biggest concern was drowning. That's how much water was coming out at the place he was. OK, what about uh, San Francisco? Is it a concern in San Francisco? Next slide. Well, I, I probably don't have to tell you we have earthquakes in San Francisco. This is a fairly famous map. <clears throat> Hunter's Point is located right here. It shows the faults in the Bay Area and the probability of a magnitude 6.7 or greater earthquake in the next 30 years. And what you can see is virtually all of the faults are capable of generating earthquakes. And two of these, the uh, San Andreas and the Hayward Fault, are fairly close to Hunter's Point. So they would be major uh, concerns in terms of seismic sources. So we know we have the potential for shaking. Next slide, please. And if we just sort of step back and look at San Francisco, this is the city of San Francisco, the Golden Gate, Bay Bridge, Hunter's Point. The green areas you're looking here, and we're going to look at this map in a, uh, more detail in a, at the end of the talk, but basically what the green areas are are areas that have been filled in. They either were formerly bay waters or they might have been marshes, uh, river courses. But in the course of developing San Francisco, there's been a lot of fill placed in. And very often, this fill is uh, just sandy material, the kind that we saw in that picture that could liquefy. Not all of it is, however. Some of it is, for example, people will carve away uh, hillsides, and uh, th that debris will be dumped into the bay. Uh, you could have refuse. Uh, uh, in some cases, people just use clay. Now, clay doesn't liquefy, but if it's very soft, it can still fail during earthquakes, so you can have stability problems, but you won't have problems with the liquid coming out of the ground. Next slide. Oh, if we go back one. <laughs> uh, I just wanted to show you a couple pictures from San Francisco from 1989. These are up in the Marina District, and they illustrate the kinds of things you get. Next slide. Um, these are sand boils. Uh, this is somebody's backyard in the Marina District, and you can see when this picture was taken, there's still evidence of all the water that came out. See how it's muddy? It's not just sand. This is out in Marina Green. Next slide. Um, okay, what, is it, what does it do? 
This is sort of a summary of all the things that can go wrong when you get liquefaction. Now, this is obviously the worst case scenario. <clears throat> the, the biggest concern is that, in this case, we're looking at a liquefiable fill with a water table up here. Once that sand is liquefied, the ground can flow. So if it has a place to flow to, like the bay, then what can happen is you'll start getting cracks. Here's sort of a head scarp. It's basically just a large landslide. You can see where the water and the um, sand come spouting out. But even more important, because this ground is moving, the pipelines, the water and gas that are in the, the subsurface can be ruptured by that movement. And very often, uh, if you rupture a gas line, you have fire. Similarly, buildings that aren't properly designed, that are just resting on what was formerly just solid earth, now can sink into the liqui liquefied fill. So the bottom line is here, when you have liquefaction potential, you have to do a lot of engineering design to address these problems. Next slide.